For me, one of the most important advancements with version 5.0 of Autoplay Media Studio was the script editor. Um, let's take a look first at the autocomplete function. When you start typing in something here, it takes a guess. It compares what you're typing against the built-in functions and it'll guess at what you're doing. And if it's right, you can press control space. So I was typing the word dialogue, so I'm going to press control space. If I put in a period and start typing message, again, it's guessed the action I'm typing. And I can go ahead and press control space. Now you can arbitrarily go ahead and type in anything you want. It's not going to interfere with you. But if you make a syntax error, such as this, because our scripting language is case sensitive, it's going to suggest to correct it for you, and if you don't, it won't work. So I like to use the autocomplete function just to make sure everything's good. Okay, and there's another aspect to the autocomplete function which is cool, which is if we type in the first part of an action and hit the period, it actually gives us all the possible choices for the second part. So we don't have to remember all the actions. We can use the arrow key or the mouse to select one of these and go ahead and just hit enter. Okay, so that's the autocomplete function and that's something I use all the time. Now you'll notice these tabs along the bottom. Depending on whether you have an object or a page selected, you'll have different tabs. So for example, pages can play actions in different areas. For example, on show, on close, etc. A object, such as a button object, I'm just going to stick one in here, has a different series of events. And I'm just going to shrink this down. As you can see here, it has on click, on enter, and on leave. So it's a whole other story. I'm going to duplicate this so that we can take a quick look at some of the right-click functions. One of the neat things about the script editor here is if you right-click, it gives you a variety of things. But one of the really neat things is the insert reference. So if we're going to go to put in a reference to one of our buttons, we don't need to remember the names of those buttons. We just need to go to Insert Object Reference, and it gives us a list. So that's very handy. So we can click on it, and it'll insert a reference. We can also cut, copy, and paste text. We can commit to undos and redos by right-clicking in here. And we can also add and edit actions. So if I get rid of this code, I'm going to right-click and choose Add Action. And it's going to bring up the wizard. I can go ahead and add an action, any action. And if I want to edit that action, I can just go ahead and right-click on it or do one of the methods we learned earlier in the editing action lesson. Okay, Just right-click and you get the action properties. Another neat thing you can do with the right click is you can change the colors and the settings for your fonts and stuff like that in the editor settings. So let's go ahead and type in a keyword here so we can see what I'm talking about. You'll see it typed it in blue. So let's go ahead into the edi editor settings under color font and let's change the keyword color to red. And when I hit apply, you'll see it actually applied it for me. So that's kind of cool. We can set up our font style and size. Additionally, we can set up our indentation style, our auto indentation style, our tab size. We can choose from a variety of different built-in languages here for our keywords, and it will actually keyword to that language. So for example, in the HTML language, um, an href tag would be a keyword. In the Lua language, a function word would be a keyword. And we can also choose this option here to fix up te text case while typing language keywords. Um, additionally, we've got options here for the keyboard where we can set up key assignments and we've got a miscellaneous page with a variety of different things. We can turn on and off our horizontal scroll bar for example, like that, and we can turn off syntax highlighting. So you can see it just turned that function word black and so forth. I encourage you to go through these and experiment with all these set settings and you know really get to know what they are and how they work for you because it can really save you some time. Let's just quickly take a look at the auto indentation style here. So we've got auto indentation off, follow language scoping, or copy from previous line. I like to leave it on this last option. You can turn it off or follow your language if you like. But let's take a look at what that does. So copy from previous line. If we go here, for example, and put a if statement, say if x is less than 5, um, then, and we're going to put an end statement, now we want to indent our text in here. I'm going to type the action. If we had auto indentation off, it would have actually went to the start of the line. But since we have it on follow last line, it actually, when I pressed enter, started at the same place. So it's very handy for me. I can go ahead and type 
keeps things nice and clean, particularly if you want to insert another conditional here, for example. Um, within that because you want these things to stay readable and you want to be able to do this fast too you don't have all day long to be messing around with your actions so that's why I keep auto indent on I hope you guys uh, have time to go through the various different selections there and try the things out and find what works best for you